so here we are day number four of beautiful San Francisco we are going on a walking tour of this beautiful city and guess what you get to come along for the ride I know I'm excited too um, I got up this morning I got a coffee like literally delivered to my hand Sunny you go down in the history for being probably the best man on the planet I got to give a big hug to my best friend before she went off to work. So is today starting out of a 10 out of 10? I would have to agree with that. Uh, so we are heading on our walking tour and hopefully we have an amazing time. Because if we don't, well, then it's not my fault. <laughs> downtown San Francisco, one nice compact tour here. So we're going to get started with the earliest history of San Francisco, where everybody came from moving out to the city, where the city grew up from. We'll talk about the first few years of the city, how this became a real immigrant city in those days. We'll talk about how this was not really the greatest time to come to San Francisco in those early years. San Francisco was filled with criminals in those days. It was burning down fires over and over. Like I said, not a pleasant time to be here, but we'll talk about how we overcame some of these challenges, became a bit more of a modern city. We would never in our lives call San Francisco a normal city, but we did become a bit more modern. We will take a famous San Francisco cable car ride up to the top of Knob Hill and we'll visit Grace Cathedral, I think about the most beautiful building in San Francisco. We'll walk through the neighborhood of Knob Hill where all the wealthy and powerful businessmen of the 1800s live. We'll get walking down through uh, Chinatown. This is the oldest Chinatown in the world outside of Asia. It's really the biggest Chinese community in the West here. We'll keep going with Beach. This is San Francisco's Little Italy. This is what I think is the most delicious neighborhood in San Francisco. And so there's some of the greatest restaurants and bars, cafes, nightlife out there. It's a great place to visit. And we'll finish up the tour back here in more modern San Francisco. First of all, it was almost entirely men who were moving here. And when I say almost entirely, I mean there were about 75 men for every one woman in San Francisco in those days. It's a very rough, young male area. But there were also a lot of criminals coming out to San Francisco. So if you had committed a crime somewhere around the country or around the world, you might decide, you know, I don't really want to go to jail, so I'm going to jump on a ship and come out to San Francisco. A large group of former Australian prisoners who came out here. And this group of former Aussie convicts formed the meanest, most vicious, violent street gang in our city's history. <laughs> and this group went by the terrifying name of the Sydney Ducks. It wasn't just a violent crime that was bad. It was illegal gambling and drug use, like opium dens around here. There were obviously 75 men for every woman. There was a lot of houses of prostitution around here. Well, the, it got so dangerous, the police department of San Francisco actually announced that we are not even going to go into Sydney Town anymore. It has become too dangerous for the police to walk in there. So we're just telling all of you, don't go into that neighborhood either. The only public transportation system we had before the 1870s was a system called the horse-drawn trolley. And this is what it looked like. You can see it was a car that looked kind of like the cable you know, cobblestone roads in those days. Well, these cobblestones on a rainy day, they'll get wet and they'll get slippery. But one day in 1872, a guy named Andrew Halliday was walking around Chinatown, that area we were just going through, and he saw one of these horse-drawn trolleys going up this steep hill, and it was a wet, rainy day. They saw one of the horses, their foot sort of slipped out from under him, the horse stumbled and fell over it, knocked over the horse next to him. Both, both horses ended up on the ground as the car came crashing down the hill, and both horses ended up dying that day. The people got injured, the car itself was all destroyed. Oh, Andrew watching this happen is thinking, there has to be a better way of transporting people through the city. And he was actually a great person to realize this because he had made a lot of money selling a family invention called metal rope or wire rope, like rope made out of metal, what we now call cable. And he thought, you know, instead of having a, like a big steam engine on a car, which is just impossible in those days, you can't put one of these big steam engines driving a heavy car up a steep hill, 
Well, what if you put this big steam engine in a building and you connected that engine to the car using a long metal rope here? So he built this. here in Grace Cathedral in San Francisco. The church was rebuilt, I believe, uh, 1920 to 1960, so 40 years worth of construction. Um, there's a lot of history in this church. There's a lot of stained glass windows dedicated to not just people of uh, from Moses' time, but also 21st century people. Believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, we are standing on top of a parking garage, but these views, San Francisco, your views. I cannot get over how gorgeous the city is to photograph, how gorgeous it is to shoot here. This city has my soul for a whole bunch of different reasons. Like, okay, hold on, I'll show you some better photography. So just over my shoulder here is Alcatraz. So you can see that the city has so much to offer in terms of landscape and photography. It is beyond beautiful here. And I'm so excited to keep showing you more. Paper, that San Francisco Chronicle. And he had this column where every day he would walk around the city and just talk to people. People who have been here for two weeks, people who have been here for six generations. He didn't ask them what they like about the city, what they don't like, what's changing. And he was very connected to San Francisco and he loved this city more than anything. And so he wrote this column six days a week for over 50 years in the newspaper. And so he just loved this San Francisco so much. And he said towards the end of his years, as he was getting later on in life, he said that when he dies and he goes up to heaven, he's sure he's going to take a look around up there and say, yeah, this place isn't bad, but it's just not the same as San Francisco. So hopefully you've enjoyed your little piece of our heaven. That's the end of our tour today. So thank you thank so you. much for coming out. Letting me tell you stories about...